Cracking open coconuts is the first step to making this vegan ice cream. It's part of a production process that founder Kai Norte says makes her brand stand out. But with no air conditioning in her rented kitchen space, making ice cream here can be tricky. So you can see that it's 80 degrees Fahrenheit, so it's kind of warm in here. We need it to be about 65. It's one of the many hurdles Kai faces in scaling Kube. Since the company launched in 2016, demand has soared. But the ongoing struggle to find large-scale investors has kept Kai from growing quickly enough to meet that demand. Our demand is far exceeding our capacity to supply. We are selling 80% of our inventory in the first two to two and a half hours. <laughs> Kai and her husband, Ninwe, run the entire Kube operation on their own. And the couple is having a hard time filling orders. We are two people doing the work of about eight people. This is why investors need to invest in us now, because people want this product every day. Kube ice cream uses a coconut rather than a dairy base. And today, they're making 150 cartons of their coffee latte flavor, which sell for $5 a piece. After cracking the coconuts, the meat goes into a shredder. From there, the shreds are sent through a hydraulic press. The coconut milk gets mixed with the coffee flavor and is then processed into a frozen blend. Finally, Kai and Ninoe quickly hand scoop the ice cream into containers. Making ice cream in a warm kitchen has forced them to get creative. So sometimes we have to come in here late at night when it's cooler. We have to have dry ice under the pan. So when the ice cream is coming out into the stainless steel pan, we have to put dry ice blocks on there. So it's really keeping the ice cream cold. They share the kitchen with other businesses, so their limited access is another factor keeping them from scaling up production. We are growing really fast, but we've been growing and we're still, we're like stuck and we feel stifled in the commercial kitchen uh, because we can't get in every day. Kai plans to get her own manufacturing facility where she'll hire a team and upgrade to fully automatic equipment. Then she'll be able to produce 2,000 cartons a day, a big jump compared to her usual output of about 150 a day. She's already raised over $100,000 through small-scale investors and is aiming to raise 3 million more. But finding the right kind of large-scale investors hasn't been easy. The challenge as a black woman is, is we're now playing in their sandbox. We're now playing in the sandbox of other folks who don't want to refer us or connect us. These folks want to hire me. They don't want to invest in me. And so you still see the systemic racism. It's a struggle Kai shares with other black entrepreneurs. One study found that just 1% of venture-backed startups were black-owned. That could be due to the lack of representation at venture capital firms. A 2018 Deloitte study showed that across 200 U.S. firms, just 4% of employees were black. Without equal representation in the venture capital space, Black-owned companies continue to lack access to funding. For Kai, the right investors will align with Kube's business values. So it's important that Kube, and it's important that Black folks and Black women have conscious investors who are very clear that we have to address systemic racism. It's important to say, how are you gonna make profit and how are you gonna have a social impact? And that social impact does not have to be a detriment to making a profit. Yes, we need to produce, but we're gonna do it in a sustainable way. Sustainability is a core tenet of Kube's brand. We locally manufacture the, the coconut cream here. They're minimally processed and we don't use artificial colors. We don't use artificial flavors. By leaving out preservatives, processing locally, and bringing coconut scraps to nearby farmers to use as compost. They have a whole bunch of trees and vegetables and plants. Kai's business is supporting what she calls a regenerative economy. Regenerative is about restoring life. It's regrowing, reconnecting, building relationships with people in the plant-based food ecosystem so that we're restoring our dignity to ourselves, to each other, and to the earth, and to animals, and to the soil. On top of dedication to the planet, Kai is set on making a product that actually tastes good to both vegans and dairy lovers. We had all kind of folks taste it who said, I don't like coconut. 
I shouldn't taste it. And I said, no, you really should. Like, you really, really should. Sure enough, they tasted it and they were like, you're lying. This is dairy. And I'm like, no, this is not dairy. This is coconut. When you work with real food, you understand what it really tastes like.